Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Welcome to me uh, where I explain uh, what I've been up to this week and hopefully improving Inkscape. Uh, but first, as always, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors on Patreon and LibrePay. Thank you so much for helping me um, make it possible to work on Inkscape and also to make it important to listen to what you want to see in Inkscape. So uh, let's get straight into what I've been up to this, this week. Um, so to continue on from last week, I've been continuing doing the templating. Uh, as also, I've been watching bugs and seeing if there's important things to fix in the beta. Um, there was some technical issues with an upgrade to Pop OS. I decided to upgrade to the latest long-term support. And uh, remember, kids, only let a trained professional upgrade your computer to the next long-term support. So, But apart from uh, a day or so of uh, outage, um, the, the templating is currently coming along quite well. It is almost entirely finished, but it's not sort of ready. So what I'm going to do is rather than continue, I'm going to um, park it and let the user experience team have a look at what I've done so far. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to come up with some comments about how things are laid out and whether there are further improvements that are ne needed. Um, but let's have a look at what I have actually done in the templating. So. As you remember, the idea is, is that the, the start screen has a, an ability to load from a temp template. And the, there's a menu item called new from temp, temp template. And these two, two windows were vastly di different, contained completely different con content. And we wanted to harmonize them so that they were the same templates, right? So you had the same abilities in both. Um, so this week I managed to make it so that the uh, Python based uh, template generators. This is the DVD cover, the business cards one, the seamless pattern creator, all have uh, the ability to create icons in the in that interface and you can load them directly. Uh, you, you click on them, it asks you the question, quick questions that it usually would ask for, for an extension and then it generates the document from there. Um, we also have uh, many of the for formats that were duplicated in the Python INX templating have been removed because they're no, no longer necessary. They are basically part of the um, the templating infrastructure itself. Um, uh, now, one of the things that I wanted to fo fo focus on specifically was the idea of asking these questions. So, like when you when you ask an extension. Hey, do a thing f for me. It pops up a little window sometimes that says, uh, what is, you know, what is this number or what is this string or what is this thing? These are the, these are the preferences. And the way I wanted to construct it was the idea that like each of these icons that you, ha you see is actually a preset of answers for these preferences. And Sometimes the presets would contain all of the answers. So a good example of that is the um, A4 landscape has a height and a width and an orientation, right? So it's answered all of the questions. Um, but the A0, I wanted like, I didn't want a duplication of like landscape portrait, landscape portrait, landscape portrait for like every single thought format. So what happens for the other ones is that you click on them and it um, asks you the the orientation, and the way it does this is it, it looks at the um, answers that the pre the preset has given so far. It answers those and then asks the user the remaining question questions. Um, doing this required more refactoring of the um, extensions code than I was expecting, but it's actually it's it's a nice improvement I think, and it allows us to actually tailor the questions that we're asking users more more, more specifically. Um, I also had to make sure that icons were something that you could add and descriptions and names and things were translatable and that there was reasonable ways of setting it. So, you know, you create a new extension, you can actually set an icon, you can actually set a preset, you can actually put them in these menus in the places that you want them to be. Um, I also had to make sure that the uh, that we have a templates directory and you can put SVG documents into it. And any SVG do document that's in that directory will appear 
uh, in the old di dialogue. So I had to put those back, which involved creating a special kind of extension that read the contents of that directory and presented them as presets. Uh, I also wanted to make sure that the, uh, they, those two could set icons so that they could be customized and they, they, they could look nice. Mostly this is for like the about screen. And I think there's like a trifold in, in, in there. There's probably some review that needs to happen on like what temp templates that we ship. Um, and so, the, you know, there's a lot of refactoring that's gone, gone on, but mostly what I've been trying to do is I'm trying to clean the code and at the same time keep most of the functionality while making sure that like all of the functionality is in one sing, sing, single place. Instead of us having, you know, five different places in the code where the A4 format was defined, there's now one place and it's usable from several different pla places in several different ways. Um, but in a harmonized and sensible way. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's basically fun functioning, um, but there are some user experience quest questions, so I'm going to hand it off to the UX team. It's probably going to be something that I'll get back to after the release when things are less hectic. Uh, but at least it's been fun. I've had a lot of fun uh, looking at this fe feature and like fixing this particular harmonization problem. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be focusing on the on the release next week because it's crunch time to making sure all, all the back ports get in and making sure that all of the fixes that we've been doing for the last few weeks actually make it into the release. Uh, and there's probably going to be some release related things, graphics to be made or uh, translations to fix or various other things. Um, okay, so let's have a look at uh, other things that are going on in Inkscape. These are features and fixes that I didn't do and uh, we should have a look at them. Nathan Lee has continued his heroic uh, fixing uh, campaign where he's just blitzing through problems. Um, he must have at least 12 merge requests that he's merged in this week with tons of fi fixes for crashes, for like just little things, smoothing things out, um, small imperceptible things that needed to be just be fixed. Um, so congratulations again, Nathan. This is great work. Uh, Raphael merged his eraser tool uh, fixes. He's been trying to fix the, the detection of where the eraser tool hits uh, objects and, and the detection of those objects. Um, PBS has been working on more memory leaks uh, and more uh, just like general improvements to, to the code and also investigating some of our code to see where we can improve things. And Javier has been trying to fix the... Um, Live path effects. They always need a little bit of fixing. So um, yeah, there's a lot of great work. We're running into the very end now of, of the release. So hopefully uh, I will be able to report to you next week, fingers crossed, that we've made a release or that we're the actual fixed date that we're going to make the release. And uh, I'll see, see you all next week.